I can use my cane because today was real. Hey everyone, please forgive me if my wig is a little off center, <laughs> but I just came back from physical therapy and let me just say now, whoo, not easy, not easy, not easy, not easy. Today was tough. And, um, you know, because of the nature of my situation, some of it I cannot share because it's very personal, but I'll just say now that what's bothering me is affecting my mobility, it's affecting everything, what sitting, standing, laying down, going to the bathroom, you name it, I, I, it is what it is. So, um, but I love my physical therapist. She is amazing. But one thing I just want to bring in awareness is that to the doctors out there, when your patient is telling you something's wrong, when they are bringing receipts, meaning that maybe they went to other doctors or they have notes or, you know, they're really being descriptive and detailed about their conditions, please, please, please listen to them. Try not to just wave it off and say, oh, it's whatever, or just quickly diagnose without really, really knowing the real problem, okay? Because in my situation, if I feel, if some doctors would have listened to me, um, some of this could have been avoided, you know? I will say now that one of the problems I'm having is my lower back. Now that I've already known, that's fine. But the other problem that's very personal, that I feel could have been at least dealt with if the doctors would have listened to me and it's not for a lack of trying. So if you're a patient, please make sure that you really stay on top of your doctors and doctors, I need you all also to do better and listen to your patients. Okay. Don't get wrapped up into the insurance stuff. I know it's a money thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you do that, it's really hurting us because then we get worse. And then when we have to go for, to physical therapy and other things, then we realize just how severe our situation is. And it's quite unfortunate, you know, and I'm not here to blame anyone or to suggest that, you know, it's anyone's fault. Okay. This is my body. And sometimes things just happen. I did have three surgeries, so I'm not blaming anyone. But again, I just want to really stress, listen to your patients. Don't just quickly, you know, make an assumption because this is real. And it's not easy. So I have a long road ahead, friends, but I'm trying my best. And it hasn't been easy because I do have depression and my depression has kicked up a little bit. So I've been dealing with that, plus my body pain. You know, I'm not working. So it, there's a lot going on, but all we can do is breathe. And as I always like to say, try your best, because when you try your best, you certainly will do your best. So me and the cane here. We're going to relax now because my legs feel like jello. <laughs> and I'm um, just going to take it easy. So, love you all so much. Take care, and I'll see you very soon. I hope I look okay. Okay. 
I know I haven't really been saying too much here on social media. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've been in my own little bubble and just been focusing on myself, how I'm feeling, both my physical health, my mental health. And I don't know. I feel like I'm in a different space. You know, one thing about social media that I've learned, because I've been on here for a long time. I think I started my social media back in 2007, if I'm not mistaken. But it was only until 2010 and 11 is when I really, really um, got more involved with Instagram. and Well, not so much Instagram, but on YouTube and Facebook and then later Instagram. So I've been on here for some time. And I've learned that it can be very overwhelming. You know, you work hard and post content and people like it or they don't like it. You know, we're doing so much. But sometimes I often wonder, what are we getting from this? What are we really getting from this? Because... At the end of the day, are we really getting paid for our work? Are we really, you know, being seen by people, you know, really, are we being heard, you know? And and I know I'm speaking for a lot of us content creators out there because I, for one, am, am not a big influencer or popular, whatever. Like, I'm not. It seems like those who are in that status, they make it seem, but sometimes I feel it's a little guys that gets kind of overlooked. And to be very truthful, I didn't get on social media to be popular or anything. I really came on here to showcase my um, creativity. That was in the beginning. And then later, it's really sharing my story and how I turned my pain into purpose, my love for teaching ESL, English as a second language. You know, so my purpose is pretty, it has meaning. You know, it's direct, it has meaning. And I hope it's meaningful to those who watch my content, to those who know me personally, whether it's on or offline, you know, but sometimes it gets very overwhelming, you know, you just feel like you're going to go, it's like the hamster on that wheel, and and nothing happens, you know, you don't know people care what you're talking about, you don't know people actually want to see you or what you're talking about, what you're doing. Um, and I say that too because, you know, I, I do have a business and a lot of times when I state that and I say it's just me, then the response is, oh, you're a freelancer or when you're getting another job or whatever, or you work for a school. And I'm like, no, I'm a business, <laughs> you know, solopreneur, entrepreneur, teacherpreneur. There's a lot of errors in this um, in this business. But you know, sometimes I know I don't always get taken seriously because it is just me. And that's something I've started on this journey being, and I will continue to be solo because I love being solo. I really want <clears throat> to be that example to anyone who's in the ESL adult education profession to see what I'm doing and take something from that, you know, so one day I can pass the torch to that person and they can continue on with what I've started. I'm here for a specific reason and it's not just to make money or to just sell books and materials. Yes, that's part of it, but it's really reaching the communities that really need it because in my career, I started working in a underserved community. I know what it's like working with people who really are struggling uh, economically, socially, and of course, linguistically, which is learning English, right? So I am very aware of that, and I, I, I really am so passionate about that, and I want to help as many people as I can, you know, and let them know that just because you come from an underserved community, or you're poor, or you're not able to go to school, or go to the best school, just know there's help out there and I want to be that example so this is more about community than business per se Um, and it's just sad that you know in my efforts to showcase my purpose I don't feel that I really reached as many people as I would like I know I have in the classroom I know I have with my students definitely love you all so much but when it comes to the business side of this when it comes to say hey I have materials for your school or for your community you know I'm willing to donate you know if you if it's you're in a poor community and you're not able to buy I'm willing to donate I haven't really made much leeway with that and I'm disappointed because I feel that in education you need materials, right? You need to have supplies. If you have people out there who's willing to share, let them share it. The only thing I ask in return is some type of 
evidence that you're using my materials. And why is that important is because it not only shows me that you actually are using my stuff, but it helps me to grow in my business so I can do bigger and better things. You know, customers, clients, students, teachers, you know, they want to see that you are who you say you are. And I respect that. If you're going to pay money for my services or for my materials, yes, you need to see evidence of people actually working with me and actually using my materials. I agree. And that's the whole reason why I created and wrote the books I wrote and the video lessons and the worksheets. So I just want to say in conclusion, this is not about I want to make money, I want to be rich and la la la. No. I'm a believer, I love God, and I believe that God will provide, and money is transactional, it comes and it goes, so I don't stress the money so much, yes, I need to make money to sustain my business, that's facts, but I really want to make clear that when I started this journey, it wasn't about just making money and looking gorgeous, okay, it's really to make sure that I help my beautiful adult learners out there who are struggling to learn this language, who need to use this language in their everyday life. They are not getting access to the materials that they need. They may not be able to afford the language school. Maybe they are middle aged like myself and they feel embarrassed taking classes with 20 or teenagers, 20 year olds or teenagers because they feel like, hey, I could be that person's mom. Like, I don't feel comfortable being around children, right? You know, I understand because I started my career working with people who are my grandparents. So, I really, really want to reach out to my middles particularly because I feel sometimes we don't always get the love, right? And for the students out there who know what they want, they just need a little help along the way, that's what I'm here for. Particularly in learning English in their everyday life, as well as job readiness, helping them prepare for work, but in a more humanistic way. It's not just do this, do this, do this and get the job. It's more about feeling confident in yourself it's more about feeling like you can do this you know because before you do anything in life you have to believe in you and that's the most important thing and I just needed to just get that off my chest because I know a lot of you see me as happy teacher Dara yeah 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 and I am you know I I am genuine about how I present myself here on camera but you know I am a human being and it can get hard and sometimes people say that they 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 rooting for you and they want to see you win but there's no actual support then there's no sharing the love there's no communication it's just like flatline and I'm not going to jump into the trends and do what everyone else is doing to say yes I matter because I matter regardless if I'm on social media or not I matter if I become a millionaire or not. So th that's something I want to make clear. And I'm hoping someone who hears this video, whether you're in my country, I live in New York City, the United States, or overseas, I really hope to make a difference in this world. And if you're a teacher and you need materials, please reach out to me. If you are a student or someone who's interested in finding work or need help with your English, reach out to me. Yes, this is a paid service. These are all paid services. So if you are not interested in paying this free content, I wish you the best of luck. But I just want now to be respected as a business, understand my purpose, and if that's good with you, then let's work together because I'm very genuine about what I do. I love what I do as a teacher. I love the materials I create. And I feel confident to say that if you give me the opportunity to show you who I am, what I'm offering, you're going to love it too. Thank you so much and always try your best.